Good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. We just had a meeting to discuss the budget um, with the Speaker of the Assembly, Sheldon Silver, the Senate Leader, Dean Scalos, uh, and our respective staffs. It was a very good conversation. It was a positive conversation. Uh, the conference committees are apparently going along very well, uh, and we were glad to hear that. I want to make sure that my colleagues know that any way of I can, that I can be of assistance, that it would be my pleasure to be of assistance. We spoke through a few issues that uh, we've been discussing for weeks. But um, progress is good. We will continue. You know that uh, you've all been through this many times before. It's not over until it's over, but uh, so far, so good. I think both uh, adages are true today. Tomorrow morning, we'll be having a five-way meeting. Uh, to continue the discussion, and I look forward to that. Um, with that, Thank you, Senator. Thank you. And, Speaker, uh, we've had a um, very good conversation uh, really discussing the, uh, the two uh, different budget resolutions that were passed in the Senate and the Assembly uh, and the status of the uh, conference committees which are going on right now. We expressed to the Governor, and we appreciate his leadership, uh, in getting an early budget, not just an on-time budget, an early budget, that uh, our conference committees are functioning well, the members are working, and it's our hope within the next day that we can close down either three or four uh, of the conference committees and really get the momentum going so that we can get this budget done. So thank you, Governor. Thank you. Mr. Speaker? Yeah, I just want to join the Senator. You know, we both committed in our opening of the General Conference Committee uh, that we would have rank-and-file members sitting and discussing the differences between the two resolutions. Uh, that process is going very well, but we also both committed that we would be in consultation with the governor on our differences in the various resolutions with him. Uh, his staff has been uh, very available to our staff, and he is available to us. And today was one such meeting where we discussed a number of issues, um, that fall into that category. I'm uh, pleased with the progress we're making. I am very uh, optimistic about an on-time budget, and uh, maybe we'll even shock you by uh, a few days. But uh, realistically, I think the process is working well, and that's the best report I can make to you. Great. Questions? Okay, no questions. Thank you very Go much. Governor? Um, Governor? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear any questions. Several of the rank and file members in the conference committee so far made references to over the next few days, even over the next two weeks. Is there some difference of opinion here on how long this process is going to take? On time. Goal would be an on-time budget. We've been saying that all along. We hope to have the budget done online, uh, on time. Deadlines are deadlines. And um, I think it's uh, an important statement. Um, as you know, I don't think it's the be-all and end-all. I think the be-all and end-all is the people of the state deserve a good budget. But uh, the, the goal today is to work towards having an on-time budget. Sticking points in it. Um, money, money, the money is the sticking point. Funny how that happens. Questions about allocations. Look, the budget is, this is an extraordinary, extraordinarily difficult budget, first of all, just as a frame of reference. Um, the, my colleagues have worked through many of these situations during their tenure, uh, and their frame of reference uh, has more history than mine in this capacity. But this is a very, very difficult budget. $10 billion is a big number. The state of the national economy, the state economy, these are very difficult choices. Um, frankly, I think it uh, shows extraordinary goodwill and leadership by both of these two men, that we are where we are today. This has not been the most uh, streamlined process, the so-called budget process in Albany. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, the aggravating factors of this budget with these numbers and these deficits and these pressures, um, you could argue that it should have been uh, uh, much more difficult than ever before. Right now, it looks like it's uh, working much better than it's ever worked before. Again, until you get over the goal line, you haven't scored, and we're all aware of that, and, and things could happen. But right now, it looks very good, especially considering the 
degree of difficulty. Would either of you like to add anything? No, I'd like to find out where you got those sunglasses you were <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed, the, 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 just as an aside, there was a photo of me today in the New York Post wearing sunglasses. They were not the most fashionable sunglasses. I had just borrowed them from Senator Skelos. Yeah. That's the truth, and that's where I got the glasses from. Governor, can you update us yeah, on you go. No, you explained it at all. Can you update us on the status of negotiations with PEF, and are we going to be able to avoid layoffs? We're working very hard uh, to that goal with both PEF and CSEA. First comes and goes uh, without a budget passed by the legislature. How prepared are you to use the extenders to get what you want in the budget through an emergency appropriation? Prepared. Budget? Prepared. You know, the, the ultimate obligation here is to get the people of the state of New York a good budget, right? That's, that is the goal. The means is do it uh, amicably in a three-way process and get it done on time. That's what we are working towards now. I am optimistic that we can get that done. My colleagues are optimistic. Uh, I'm hopeful. I have my fingers crossed. Uh, but there's a, there's a, your question suggests a note of realism. Let's say it doesn't happen, right? What's the contingency plan? Then there are other ways to get the budget done. Mr. The uh, millionaire tax sought by the Assembly Speaker and the Assembly come up in your discussions, and if so, what did you tell the Speaker about it? We have had many conversations about the millionaire's tax uh, over the past months. The new version of it, though, that was released this week. We've talked about old versions, new versions, streamlined versions. And if so, can you tell us what was discussed yeah, it, didn't it did not come up in this meeting today, but there have been many, many conversations about it, Fred. Do you believe that you could add money back in for education and social services, as the legislature is requesting, without a revenue generator like the millionaire's tax? There is... Is there flexibility within the budget? Uh, yes, there is flexibility within the budget. Is there flexi flexibility among the parties? Yes, there's flexibility among the parties. You know, it is an executive budget. The governor prepares the budget. The governor is the constructor of the budget. Uh, but it is done in consultation with the legislature, and that's the process we're working through now. So can there be adjustments to the budget? Of course. You know, Aaron, there are many options available now. I don't want to get into which ones are open, which ones are closed, but uh, obviously there's flexibility on all sides. Really I'm not ruling anything in, I'm not ruling anything out. Do you have an agreement on any of the issues regarding, major issues regarding school aid and Medicaid at this point? We are speaking about education aid and uh, the MRT report. So what do you think about the uh, uh, sacrificing of your, your incentive programs for superior performance in the classroom and, and in the administration of schools? I'm not willing to sacrifice them. You are not willing to sacrifice performance. Look, for me, one of the major incentives, one of the major initiatives in the budget is moving towards performance, right? Moving towards performance. It's not just more money, more money, more money. It's better performance, better achievement, better outcome, better goals. And that's nowhere more true than in education. We're funding these formula block grants. The school district keeps getting money, whether it does a great job or a bad job, it gets the same amount of money. Incentivize performance. Right? That's been the whole movement. That's what the federal government has been trying to tell us for years. And we established two funds in education that will start to do that. Performance in student achievement, performance in uh, management efficiency of the school districts. Uh, so I think they're essential. One more. Are there any circumstances? Are there any circumstances under which you include some version of an income tax surcharge in your final budget? No. Can I ask a non-budget question? No. <laughs> Sometimes no works, doesn't it? Uh, Only once, though. With the situation in Japan right now, do uh, you think that there's a case to be made for decommissioning uh, Indian Point due to its practice in the city? We actually did discuss this issue uh, in the leaders' meeting. Um, there has been a statement made about the safety of the Indian Point, uh, Point uh, nuclear power plant uh, where the suggestion is that of all the power plants across the country, 
that the Indian Point power plant is the most susceptible to an earthquake because reactor number three is on a fault. Uh, frankly, that was surprising to me. Uh, one normally doesn't think of earthquakes and, and New York uh, in the same breath, uh, especially compared to California and out west. Uh, so that is a matter of concern. Uh, we are going to be checking into it, not the statement and the basis for the statement uh, immediately. I've had, a, I've had concerns about Indian Point for a long time. Uh, as Attorney General, I did a lot of work on Indian Point. My position was that it shouldn't be relicensed. My position was that it should be closed. My position was that it was, uh, I understand the power and the benefit. I also understand the risk. And this plant in this proximity to New York City was never a good risk. But this is new information that we're going to pursue. So, Speaker Silver, can you explain how this process seems different than past years, if at all? In which one? This process, the budget process now? Um, I think that, uh, number one, as, as you know, uh, we believe the Senate has that the Joint Conference Committee uh, is the way to go, and we're going to start closing down uh, a number of the conference committees. The Governor has brought a unique perspective in terms of whether it was some of the uh, MRT, whether you agree with components of it or not, different task force that have, have met, a, a different way of doing things. And I believe up to this point it is working. Uh, I think also the tone that has been sent uh, set one of uh, civility. Uh, I think that's incredibly important uh, to get a budget done on time. Uh, when you shout at each other, you don't listen to each other. When you talk to each other in a reasonable fashion, uh, I think you listen a lot better. So I think that that's a positive. And just so I make it clear, um, our conference and myself uh, continue to uh, oppose the continuation of the surcharge and do believe that it should expire. Can I, can I answer his question first? I was just going to just say, I think leadership and tone is what's key. And this governor has recognized the role of the legislature in the budget process, has allowed the legislative budget process to continue, and has worked with the legislature to keep us on a timely schedule and to move toward a conclusion. I think that's the real answer uh, to your question. Now. Apologies. Will you be able to come to an on-time agreement that, for a budget that does include the version of millionaire's tax? I don't draw lines in the sand. So everything is open. Everything is negotiable. I think it makes sense, though. And I think uh, we still have some time to persuade our colleagues in government that it's what makes sense, that's what brings us a balanced budget this year and a balanced budget next year. Uh, the MR, are you concerned that the MRT agreement, and especially the support of the hospitals and the unions, could collapse if the Assembly doesn't agree to the med mal piece and the Senate doesn't agree to the living wage piece? No. Why not? Good follow. Um, <laughs> Why not? The, um, I think the, well, look, first, what the MRT has worked out thus far has been extraordinary. I mean, it, if you, if, um, I was, uh, had a big role in, in setting it up, but it exceeded even my expectations. Medicaid is a major problem for the state. It's something that we have to get a hold of. This plan is the best I've seen. I believe this plan rivals uh, nationwide solutions that are being proposed right now. Um, so might, again, might there have to be adjustments to the plan? Of course. Uh, but the plan, will the plan work uh, as a totality? Yes, yes. It's essential because it's, you know, that is one of when, when you go to do this budget, the first problem you're presented with, frankly, is Medicaid. Even before education, you're presented with Medicaid as a problem. And that MRT quote-unquote, solution working plan for Medicaid is essential. Well, one reason 
reason the hospitals agreed to it was because of the med mal, the cap on uh, you know, med mal and, and pain and suffering. And also one reason, the key reason the unions agreed to it was because of the living wage. Now you have the assembly opposing the med mal piece, you have the Senate opposing the living wage piece. Aren't you concerned that if those aren't in there, then you're going to lose that union support and, and the hospital support? Are there, are there issues surrounding the MRT? Yes. Are there issues surrounding education? Yes. Are there issues surrounding almost every issue we're discussing? Yes. Uh, am I hopeful that we can resolve those issues? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.